Welcome to Tech Insight, where we show you how to make your workspace work. In today's episode, we'll be talking about implementing always-on VPN for remote Windows endpoints. When users work remotely, one of the challenges organizations face is how to provide the user with an experience that resembles that of an on-premises user. How can we apply domain-based group policies to these domain-joined endpoints where the endpoint is not physically connected to our corporate network? With Always On VPN, the endpoint automatically creates a VPN connection to our corporate network on startup. This allows the Windows endpoint to stay current with the latest computer-based Active Directory domain group policies. Without Always On VPN, endpoints are not automatically connected to the corporate network. Always On Configured with User Persona replaces the machine level tunnel with a user level tunnel when the user logs in and applies pertinent user-based group policy objects from Active Directory. With Always On VPN, remote Windows 10 endpoints receive the latest firewall configurations, such as a policy to block incoming connections due to a vulnerability or enterprise attack that may have been discovered. Without Always On VPN, firewall settings are not up to date with the latest enterprise policy settings. With Always On VPN, remote Windows 10 endpoints also receive the latest approved updates at the intervals designated by corporate policy. Without Always On VPN, there is no guarantee remote Windows 10 endpoints receive the latest approved updates at the intervals designated by corporate policy. With Always On VPN, remote users may change their Active Directory password if, for example, they think it was compromised or as security policy dictates. Without Always On VPN, remote users cannot change their Active Directory password as needed. The Always On VPN allows organizations to better maintain remote Windows 10 endpoints by keeping them aligned with the latest corporate performance and security policies. So how does Always On VPN work? User devices connected to the corporate network from branches or data center co-located enterprise offices via the LAN or WAN may be managed 24 by 7. Important updates may be pushed to their endpoints, including files, apps, virus definitions, and policies. However, remote users must VPN into the network to receive these updates, and if they don't connect regularly, their endpoint will be at risk without those updates. With the Always On VPN, remote endpoints have the Citrix Gateway plugin configured to VPN into the network automatically. Before being shipped to the users, the device has a machine certificate installed to authenticate their connection. Then they're able to log into the domain and have important updates pushed 24 by 7 as if they were connected to the corporate LAN. Additionally, once users log in, their machine level tunnel may be replaced by a user level tunnel to allow granular user level management. To implement Always On VPN, we'll look at the endpoint and Citrix Gateway configuration. We'll prepare our endpoint with the configuration steps IT would take prior to shipping the device to a new user by installing the Citrix Gateway plugin, by configuring registry settings it needs to establish an Always On VPN connection, and by importing a machine certificate for authentication into the corporate network. We'll configure our Citrix Gateway by creating Always On and authentication profiles and binding them along with the CA certificate from where the machine certificate was issued to a gateway virtual server. Here in our Windows endpoint, we'll need to configure a few areas to implement Always On VPN. We'll do it manually to get the details across, but typically this would be done by an automated system on the domain that's part of the image creation process. We'll start by opening the registry editor. We'll navigate to HKEY Local Machine, Software, Citrix, Secure Access Client. First, we'll create a D word that's called Always On. We'll sign it the value of 1. This indicates that the endpoint can use the network irrespective of the status of the VPN. Next, we'll go ahead and create another D word and we'll name this Always On Service. And then this one will assign the value of 2, which indicates that it should use the user persona in addition to the machine level tunnel. Last, we'll define an always on URL, which is the FQDN of the Citrix Gateway. Next, we'll open the Microsoft Management Console and we'll add the certificates snap in for the computer account. 
Once it's open, we'll go ahead and navigate to the personal store. And then here we'll implement our machine certificate. Do an import. We'll navigate through the file system. We'll select the cert. And we'll notice that it includes all extended properties, which indicates the key is included as well. We'll see the import was successful and the machine certificate has been imported. Last we can see that we've already installed Citrix Gateway plugin version 13.0.41. We'll start our Citrix Gateway configuration by navigating to Policies and we'll select Always On. We'll do Add. And here we'll give it a name to our Always On profile. And we'll see that here we can change any of our setting defaults. We'll go ahead and change it so users can connect from anywhere. We'll create that. Then we'll navigate to global settings and we'll change global settings. First we'll select the DNS virtual server that we created ahead of time. Then we'll navigate to the client experience tab and we'll select that always on profile that we just created. We hit OK, that's applied. Now we'll go ahead and create our virtual server. After we do add, we'll give it a name and we'll enter an IP address. This IP address will map to the public IP address that users will connect to. After we create that, we'll go ahead and we'll bind the, the certificate that corresponds to the virtual server domain name that we added ahead of time. We'll also add the certificate authority from the domain server where we created the machine certificate. And then we'll continue. And then we'll also specify that uh, certificate authority uh, certificate in the available list for certificate authentication. And then we'll continue and next we'll go ahead and uh, we'll add internet address and we'll enter a, a range and a subnet. This will allow us to establish a IP address presence on the domain once the VPN is created. And then we'll go ahead and add an authentication profile We'll do add, we'll specify a name, we'll use that uh, AO header throughout. So first we'll create a, a virtual server, and then we'll make that virtual server non-addressable. It'll just be linked to the vServer we created. We'll start by creating a authentication policy. We'll create one for the machine here. We'll create a EPA action or endpoint analysis. We'll specify uh, the common type and we'll specify device certificate which will create our expression that we need. And then for our, our policy we'll specify is always on, that's an existing parameter. We'll go ahead and bind that. Now we'll create a second policy and we'll cre create this for the, the user side of things. And we'll specify the um, no auth and we'll, we'll add that always is AO service and tack on dot not. We'll go ahead and do an add and we'll create a policy label that'll define the, the user interface and we'll specify a single factor. Then we'll go ahead and add a policy for the LDAP authentication that'll be the second factor in addition to the certificate to set up the machine level tunnel. And this is a standard setup for LDAP. We'll give it IP address. We'll specify the uh, bind DN, the administrator bind DN, uh, its password. Uh, we'll specify the uh, logon parameters and attributes. And then last, we'll go ahead and test to make sure we have reachability. And once we do, we'll go ahead and create that policy. We'll, we'll set it to true. And then we'll bind that policy label next and then we're done with the policy creation for the virtual server last thing we'll do is give a unique label to that authentication profile and we're done so you can see with always on vpn we can easily create the ability to manage those remote user endpoints